In this video, we're going to look at how easy it is to record a presentation using Office Mix. The first thing that you'll need to do is download and install Office Mix. Just go to mix.office.com, click Get Office Mix. And then you'll need to sign in with a Microsoft account, uh, a Worker School account, Facebook, or uh, with Google. Uh, once you've downloaded the installer, you'll need to run the installer, and that will add Mix to your menu in PowerPoint. To get recording, just click Slide Recording. This launches a recording page, uh, and I can view the notes if I want, if I have notes about what I want to say. They will show up uh, at the top here. Before I get recording, I need to make a couple decisions. First, I probably want to unmute my microphone, and you can see here my audio levels. I can make it louder or softer. And I can also switch on the camera if I'd like. Now, if I do choose to record using the camera, this thumbnail image is going to be overlaid onto all the slides where I have uh, audio associated. So I need to decide up front whether I want to have the slides on or not. Now, you can do this on a slide-by-slide -slide basis. If you want to start out with a little bit of yourself talking and then switch over to just slides, as some professors I know like to do in their presentations, you can do that. Record the first slide or two or however much with your video camera, and you can do full screen if you prefer. Um, or you can just do the little thumbnail, which will overlay. And I'll do the thumbnail as an example to show you. Uh, and then you can stop and record again and just disable the camera. Um, so to do the recording, I hit record and then I just say what I have to say over the slide. To advance slide I hit the next. If I had animation I would hit the little star arrow here to uh, advance the animated portion and I can do annotation too. Uh, I can for example underline make smiley faces circle things what have you and then when I'm done, I just click the little X, and that bumps me out to the presentation view. And you see here in the slide, I have the little thumbnail here. Now, if I wanted to record more presentation without the video, just go back into slide recording. But this time, I'm going to say, no camera. And now I can do some more recording. And when I'm done, I can X out or I can stop. Do I want to overwrite this recording? Yes. So now I have a slide with audio recorded on it, but no picture. So picture, picture, no picture. One of the nice things about using this method of recording is it's a slide-by-slide -slide recording uh, when it comes time to edit. So if I want to change a slide, insert a slide, remove a slide, uh, I can still do that using the regular uh, PowerPoint tools and then I just need to export the video again and, and re put it up into Blackboard. Um, so if I want to see what this is, presentation is going to look like, I can click Preview and then I just say what I have to say over the slide. To advance slide, I hit Next. So you see, it gives me a view of the presentation as I have it recorded, and I can test and see if it is the way I want it uh, before I publish. There's some handy tools inside Mix which I can use to do some of the things, uh, some little, some slightly more sophisticated things. For example, I can insert a screenshot using Mix. Let me just uh, drop in a blank slide first. Uh, so I can drop in a screenshot if I'd like, just by hitting the screenshot button. Let's me pick what window do I want to grab from, and I'm going to grab from this Blackboard window, and bam, screenshot. And then I can resize it to make it fit into my available display space. I can also do a screen recording. So here I'm going to 
highlight some space on my computer here. This is the window that I want to record. The re pointer recording is turned on so you'll be able to see my mouse as it moves or I can disable it because I, if I don't want you to see the mouse. Uh, do I want to capture audio or not capture audio? Say I will capture audio. Hit record. And then I can do what I need to do. And when I'm done, I can stop the recording. And that will give me a little video that I can drop into a slide. Get rid of the background image. If I already have video recorded, I can drop it in using insert video. Similarly, if I have already recorded audio, uh, or I have sound that I want to put in, I can just use insert audio to drop the sound in. Now when I've got everything the way that I want it, go to export video, export to video, excuse me, and then select the video size. Now full HD 1080p creates a super high quality video that looks really sharp. Uh, 720 is is good enough for uh, most desktop computers. Uh, the 480 is uh, also pretty good. Uh, 240 is small and going to be kind of um, pixely. The 1080p one is going to take a lot longer to render out than the 720, then the 420, then the 240. So I'm going to pick the 720 just so we can see. The second spin on each slide is if there's no audio or interactive content on that slide, it'll automatically spend five seconds on the slide. You can make that time greater or less just but change the number there. Hit next. Uh, decide where you want to save that video. Uh, and it'll start running. And you'll notice that while this export bar doesn't really do a whole lot. This is down here is the bar that you want to pay attention to. So it's some time later. Uh, my video has finished exporting. You see it here in this folder, the recording lectures mp4. That's the video file that got exported. I want to load this into my Blackboard course site. So here's my course site. I'm going to pop into one of the content spaces in my course. I'm going to put this into module one. And then I just do build content and then I can just do add file if I'd like and say give it an appropriate name find the file on my computer it takes a little bit to upload the video file but eventually the file gets uploaded and here we find my lecture video, three minutes, and when a uh, student clicks on the link, and then I just say what I have to say over the slide. To, depending on their computer, it'll pop right up in a player uh, in their on their machine. Perhaps surprisingly, this is the method that we recommend for uploading video rather than using build content add video. It just ends up a better experience for the students than using the video embedded video player that you get through this video link. We hope you found this video tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact the Instructional Design Studio. Thank you.